Hi everyone, Hamish here for the Uplay team at Massive Entertainment. Now, over the past couple of weeks, we've shown you how you can get the basics of your stream up and running. But today, I'm here to unload five tips that you can do right now to really up the quality of your production. It's really important for the PC that you're encoding on that we keep as many of those tasks as light as possible. The key one being playing back video files. And for this, we're gonna make sure that it has the easiest job possible by using the WebM codec. It's gonna be far less taxing on your CPU, which is really important when you're encoding. And it becomes extremely pertinent when we're talking about videos that need to have transparency. Traditionally, we would have had to use things like MOV or uncompressed AVI files. So we have 32-bit alpha channels included in those videos. But those things are huge and really hard for your PC to play back, especially when you're gaming and encoding on the same rig. So for things like this transition we have on our stream, we're using the WebM codec, which does a really good job of compressing it while still keeping that alpha channel. I also like to use it for these little mini things that we have included in our streams, little Twitter callouts and that sort of thing. So if you are interested in a more in-depth tutorial on how to create those, just let us know in the comments below and we'll try and hook that up as well. Now to make use of the WebM codec in your production, you'll either need a plugin. So when you're rendering things out from Premiere or After Effects or those type of products, you'll be able to do that. But if you don't have access to that software, you can also download a free utility called WebM Bro and I'll leave a link to that down in the description below as well. So you can convert any video files you have and really take some of that stress off your CPU. Someone actually asked me today how they could stream on their Twitch channel, have music in the background, and then maybe record those as separate audio tracks so when they put it on YouTube or want to do another edit with it, they don't have to worry about that music getting in the way. So today, let's talk about how you can split up your audio tracks in OBS for exactly that. All right, so you can see here that we have our microphone going into OBS and we also have some desktop audio, which in this case is gonna stand for our music. We wanna make sure that we have control over both of those audio files when they record. So when we bring them into our editing software, we can either delete the music or we can edit, adjust the levels or whatever. So the first thing we're gonna do is head into our settings and then go over to our output tab and then into audio. I like putting my microphone on track one and then let's say our music is track two. Okay, that's all we need to do here for now. Then what we wanna do is head into our advanced audio properties and you'll see that by default, our sources are actually set to absolutely all tracks. I mean, that's just for safety so you don't accidentally find that something's not showing up. But what we'll do is we'll uncheck everything here and then we can assign where we want our things to be. So. In this example, we'll record our desktop audio, which is our music. We'll put that on track two, like we wrote down before, and we'll put our microphone on track one. Okay. The other thing you'll need to do is make sure that you're recording in a format that isn't FLV. You could use MP4, MOV, MKV. Um, it really is personal preference. I know a lot of people like MOV, so let's go with that. The reason for that is that the FLV will not actually be able to give you separate tracks, but we'll do MOV for now and we have our recording quality that we're going for here. One last thing you'll need to do in the recording tab is make sure that your audio tracks that you've predefined are all selected because by default, we're only using one. So we'll go ahead and check one and two and then we're ready to record. So I'm just gonna record a quick sample of my voice with this music and then we'll bring that into our editing software of choice. In this case for me, it's going to be Premiere and we can see that you actually have two audio files that we can play around with. In this case, we're just gonna delete the music. Easy. You will wanna take note of where your audio is coming from though. If you're using a dual PC setup like we talked about last week, you may be sending your audio from your gaming PC over a capture card and in that case you might have squished some audio sources together those won't be able to be separated out on your encoding machine so do take note of that all of your audio sources need to be singular in obs for you to be able to record them separately 
All right, so let's talk about what we can do with your microphone. Obviously, you wanna make sure that whatever you're putting into your microphone straight away is the best possible quality. That'll mean reducing as much noise in your room as possible, because if you're trying to do that software side, you're gonna be fighting an uphill battle. I'm gonna assume that you've done everything you can to get your room sounding really nice. That's, you know, a lot of soft surfaces to cut down on sound reflections, some curtains, some rugs, and, you know, maybe some foam on the walls. If you can't do the foam thing, it's egg cartons work really good. In any case, let's start by heading over to the filters section of our microphone and we'll take a look at what we can add here. Take a look at the waveform right now. So we're starting to get into the red, which we don't want too much of, but this is what we're gonna do with the compressor. It's gonna kind of squish our waveform and keep us in line. We're gonna set that ratio down to about three, so it's not super aggressive, but you'll also notice that now the signal is kind of a little bit weaker. So we're gonna adjust the output gain back up a touch. All right, that looks pretty good to me. But if I get super excited, I still feel like it's going to peak out above that a bit much. So what we're gonna do is just for safety, add a limiter and set that to minus three, just for safety. So your viewers won't have any of those rip ears moments. Now you will need to play around with these since our voices are all incredibly different. You may want to adjust the threshold. That'll be the level at which your compressor starts to kick in, depending on how loud you speak or how resonant your voice is. I would advise caution here though. It's really easy since this is just an audio medium to let these filters get a bit out of hand and a little bit heavy handed. You basically want to make sure that these are working, but they're not too noticeable. If they are, it's gonna be really distracting for your viewers. Now it's for that very reason, and this is personal preference talking, I really don't like noise gates. I feel they lead to a really unnatural and distracting effect, but I can kind of get behind noise suppression. Now, for those of you that do have a bit of a noisy room or you want to try and lower that noise a little bit in your mix, the noise suppression filter can actually do a surprisingly good job. I would say though, that this is where personal preference can come into play as well. Anyway, let's take a quick look at where my noise floor sits when I just don't talk. All right, so we have some ambient noise. The fans of my computers and stuff are sitting around minus 45. That's not really gonna be problematic for listeners, but let's say we add this noise suppression filter and see what it does. Gets rid of it entirely, so that's pretty cool. I would, however, only use this if the noise that you have in your room is particularly annoying to your viewers. The thing is, when you speak, that noise is going to be mixed into your microphone anyway. So much better to get rid of that noise, if you can, before you have to deal with a noise suppression filter. All right, this is probably my favorite tip, and when I found out about this, I was totally stoked that OBS could do it. Ducking and side chaining your other audio out of the way of your microphone is probably one of the best things that I think you can do that your viewers will absolutely never notice, but will probably appreciate you for. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're gonna add a compressor just like before, but this time we're gonna add it to our desktop audio. What we're gonna tell it to do is we're gonna have our music channel listen to our microphone channel. So it uses what I'm saying to basically drive the music down in the mix, lower the volume of it. What we need to do here is play around with a few things because you can see right now that my desktop audio is, and I've set it up artificially loud to make a point, it's really loud. No one's gonna be able to hear me. Now, if I lower this threshold, you'll start to see what I mean. When I talk, the music actually ducks below where my voice is. And now you, again, don't wanna be too aggressive with this, but it's really nice to have your voice kind of around, you know, between minus 10 and minus five, and then have that music fall back in the mix. And this might be your game sound as well, down to like minus 20, minus 25. Again, you'll need to play around with this and see the exact effect you want, but set your sidechain ducking source to your microphone and you should be good to start playing around with that. All right, so I see a lot of people who still have issues with their webcams. And I know, cause I've had to go through all of the same things myself. 
they'll end up with low frame rates, graininess, and all of that, and it's super annoying. The one thing that your webcam isn't going to tell you is that light is the key determining factor in the quality of the image it's going to output. Often, the reason for your webcam performing poorly is that it's trying to do all these automatic calculations, especially in low light, to auto expose your image to something that it thinks is gonna look good, and then it just doesn't. Now, what we're gonna do is set up what a room might look like with a poorly performing webcam. We're gonna have to turn off these lights for that simulation time. Okay, so I know this is dark, but I'm doing it to prove a point. Let's add this webcam in OBS and we'll see what we look like. You can see already that the frame rates are absolutely terrible. Now, the best thing that you can do for this before you do anything even manually inside the webcam settings is try and add as much light to the room as possible. Now, you may not have access to light panels or that sort of thing, but any lights in your room that you can turn on are really going to help you. I mean, you can see already that with some daylight from outside and actually our ceiling light, it's at least the frame rate's better. This isn't great, but the frame rate is better. Now, if you had other light sources that you could aim in the room, that webcam's gonna be doing less automatic calculations and you should be in a better spot. The other thing you'll want to note is that it doesn't matter if you have a 1080p webcam, you're likely not gonna show it at full resolution at any time during your stream, at least not for the most part. So if you are using frame rates that are higher than your actual stream output, and if you're using resolution that you don't actually need to be using on your webcam for your stream, you're kind of wasting performance. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our webcam down to, let's say 480p. And we'll assume that we're outputting 30 FPS on our stream, so we'll use 30 FPS here as well. And then that's gonna make sure that we're in line with what we want it to do. If we had this jacked up all the way to maximum resolution, we're going to get worse performance. That's just something that's gonna happen. All right, so 480p here. And now if we head into configure our video, we're also going to do a few things here. This image is too bright for what we want. So let's turn off the auto exposure and manually set it to something that we like. All right, that's better. All right, I mean, at least in terms of frame rates, this isn't ideal, but we've, uh, we've made some progress. Now, obviously the best situation is if you do manage to get your hands on some kind of light panels or just any, any light that you can direct in your room the way that you want it. We're gonna close the curtains and see what we can end up with. All right, okay. Now we're back to something kind of bright. Let's just lower this exposure a little bit. There, well, something in between. We could go exposure minus eight here and then you know, we could adjust the brightness down a little bit. Yeah, there we go. All right, I can't overstate the fact you need to get as much light into your webcam as possible if you want it performing the best it can. If you are experiencing issues with frame rates on any webcam, it's likely due to the fact that there's not enough light going in. No amount of tinkering that you do in those settings will actually fix it. You can help with the end image, but light is gonna be your biggest friend. All right, that's gonna be all for today. And I really hope these few tips have helped you increase the quality of your stream. Now, if you do have any more questions about how to work with OBS and get your stream looking even better, do let us know of anything that's confusing you in the comments below, and we'll try and hook you up with some more information. All right, we'll see you again next week. Bye.